This video is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legend. While challengers may come and go, one OG gaming phone is in a league of its own, boasting of unmatched power, speed, and battery life. Now on its third iteration, the ASUS ROG Phone 3 has built both a following and an ecosystem. But do you really need a gaming phone? And is it your gadget match? This is our ROG Phone 3 unboxing and review. All right, let's start with the unboxing. Just like the previous two ROG phones, the ROG Phone 3 comes in this hexagonal box. Internally, we lovingly refer to it as a large Toblerone box. Ugh, now I really want some chocolate. For the uninitiated, ROG stands for Republic of Gamers. It's a similarly shaped box as its predecessors, and as always, this box is a challenge to figure out. Ah, this time you slide it out. Let me set this part aside first, because tucked away in here is the ROG Phone 3. All right, on one side of the main compartment is the Aero Active Cooler V3, and to get into the rest of the box, you pull on this tab. For those who dare, some goodies. A black bumper case. You're not gonna get much protection from this, folks. A SIM ejector tool shaped just like an ROG logo. And some stickers. Digging deeper into the box, there's also a USB-C to headphone jack adapter, a USB-C to C braided cable, replacement port covers, and a 30 watt hypercharge adapter. <laughs> One of the biggest things that sets the ROG Phone 3 apart from its competitors is its rich ecosystem of accessories, from snap-on covers to game pads. So when ASUS set out to design their new ROG Phone 3, they were intent on keeping it the same size and shape, so it wouldn't break compatibility with the older accessories. Where ASUS did make changes, however, is by paring down its design. Gone are the cutouts that mimic an ROG computer. Instead, its back is a single sheet of glass with a transparent window that shows off its aerodynamic cooling system. The ROG team tells me this is inspired by a supercar. I'm assuming like the McLaren 720S and the Lamborghini Aventador which both have backsides that let you peek into their glorious engine. Okay, I'll be honest, I know nothing about cars, so I had to phone a friend, Chris Davies, who happens to know a lot about backsides. The iridescent circuit accents are still there, but are a bit more understated. But it's still very much recognizably an ROG phone, with a similarly shaped camera module and a logo that glows up with RGB lighting. The glass finish is a bit of a smudge magnet though. I wish they went with the matte finish like last year's ROG Phone 2 Ultimate Edition. Buttons and ports are in the same places, but you know what isn't there? Yep, the headphone jack's been removed. As a consolation, the bundled Aero Active Cooler still has a headphone jack on it. More on that later when we talk about cooling. Now, all of these changes are a welcome improvement. When ASUS first launched the original ROG phone, it was clear they wanted it to reflect the brand's aesthetic, which is loud and badass. The ROG Phone 3 retains some of that, but is more mature, and that remains consistent when you flip the phone around. Not much has changed here either, but the copper accents are gone. The dual front-facing speakers are still there, and the phone still has a forehead and chin, so you don't cause any accidental taps when holding the phone this way. So what makes the ROG Phone 3 a gaming phone? For me, it's five things. Maxed out performance power, long-lasting battery life, gaming-centric hardware, special gaming-related software features, and an ecosystem of gaming-specific accessories. While I'd love for you to watch this video from start to finish, we're also making it easier for you to jump to the content that you are most interested in. So those five things that make the ROG phone a gaming phone are also outlined as chapters, which you can jump to by clicking on the chapter markers below. Also, while you're at it, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. It's not a lot for you, but it means a lot to us and it will help us get closer to our goal of 1 million subscribers.
On paper, the ROG Phone 3 is the most powerful smartphone in the market today. It has the best and the fastest of everything, including Qualcomm's new Snapdragon 865 Plus processor, which delivers all the power one can expect from Snapdragon 865, but with an added GPU boost, among other improvements. Asus has ensured the processor will deliver 3.1 gigahertz of raw power. There's up to 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM and up to 512 gigabyte of UFS 3.1 storage, both currently the fastest types of memory and storage. There's also a 6.6 inch OLED display with a 144 hertz refresh rate. And who can forget the massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery which we'll get into later. In a way, you could say they've spared no expense where they could make things bigger, faster, or more powerful. They did. And I'd like to say that in practice, the experience backs it up. In the two weeks that I had it, I played a lot of games on the ROG Phone 3, racing games like Asphalt 9, Real Racing 3, and my longtime favorite, Riptide GP. Turn-based RPGs like Raid Shadow Legends, fighting games like Marvel Contest of Champions, Battle Royale contests like PUBG, and old favorites like Bright Ridge and Leo's Fortune. The phone took everything I threw at it. Again, I'll be honest, while I do love gaming, I'm not really that much of a hardcore mobile gamer. Luckily, I have a friend who is. His name is Enabong and he runs a YouTube channel called Bored at Work and he's here with us today. Hi, my big question is do all these big high-end specs really make a difference in terms of mobile gaming performance? That's a really good question. Uh, is do high-end specs actually make a difference? Well, I don't know if it helps with your gameplay, but I think it does help in improving the gaming experience overall because it allows for developers to make better games, higher performing games, and also taking advantage of the system. As gamers, we like to see that. So taking advantage of the 144 hertz display, some games are supported, some do not. Uh, but I like the fact that's there. And also even the touch sampling, making for just a smoother feel while gaming. So those things are really, really important uh, when you're looking at mobile gaming experience. Thanks, E. For more gaming coverage on the ROG Phone 3, you can click over here to watch Anabong's video or click on the links in the description box below. Of course, with all this power and the phone constantly being pushed to its limits, cooling is much more important on a device like the ROG Phone 3 than any other phone. To solve this, Asus bundles the Aeroactive Cooler 3 with the ROG Phone. This attachable fan draws hot air from inside the phone via the small vent on the back cover. On top of that, the heatsink on the ROG Phone 3 is six times larger than last year. There's also a redesigned 3D vapor chamber and a large graphite film. By the way, the new Aeroactive Cooler 3 now features a kickstand, you pull it out like so, so you can prop your phone down while watching videos or using it with the Kunai controller. The ROG Phone 3 packs a massive 6,000 milliamp hour battery, which will easily last you two, maybe even three days with average use. Of course, continuous gameplay will consume more power. Asus is promising over nine hours of PUBG, Asphalt 9, and Call of Duty. Surprisingly, it doesn't take a long time to fill up. The bundled 30 watt hypercharge adapter will fill the battery up halfway in 30 minutes and 85% or 5,100 milliamp hours in an hour. Now to preserve the life of your battery, the phone will automatically slow down after this point. A full charge took me one hour and 41 minutes, which is still pretty respectable. Like its predecessors, the ROG Phone 3 does not support wireless charging. Reps from Asus tell me that a wireless charging module would of course have required more space, meaning you'd either get a thicker phone or a smaller battery. Let me know which compromise you would rather have, a thicker phone, a smaller battery or no wireless charging, you can join their poll by clicking up here. Apart from the obvious power packed spec sheet, this phone was designed with gamers in mind and some of the hardware choices reflect that. 
One example is its 144Hz display with a fast 270Hz sampling rate. I know these days phones with fast refresh rates are the norm, but back in the day, it was only found on gaming phones. Because this is most critical to gamers who are engaged in fast-paced gameplay. The screen needs to keep up with the fast movements of a player. Being able to quickly turn around to shoot someone behind you, for example. Touch sampling rates, on the other hand, means how fast the display responds to your taps when you, for example, pull a trigger. These differences are calculated in milliseconds, but in the world of competitive gaming, every millisecond counts. For me, the ideal way to play any game is via a controller. And even then, in the competitive world, there are controllers like Microsoft's Xbox Elite controller that lets you customize controls to the extreme. Because inputs on your phone are limited by this sheet of glass, Asus developed air triggers that mimic the feel of a physical controller. When held horizontally, the right side of the ROG phone has built-in sensors, which allows you to assign controls. So you can tap them to fire a gun in PUBG, for example. And now, with ultrasonic sensors on ROG phones, three, you can do more, like swipe to mimic a swipe of the screen, simulate dual triggers, two on each side, and trigger multiple clicks with a continuous press of the sensor. Because most games are played horizontally, Asus has designed the phone to be used this way. One small change that goes a long way is the addition of a second USB-C port over here. It's used to attach some of the accessories, but also lets you stay plugged in and charging while in the middle of a game session. Isn't that smart? There are many other things like four Wi-Fi antennas so that you can get the best connection, four microphones so that you get the best audio for discussing strategy before going into battle. Even the placement of the bezels and dual front-facing speakers are intentional so that your palms don't get in the way of gameplay and or cover up speakers like you normally would on phones with bottom firing speakers. While there's definitely a lot of buzz about the phone's high-end specs, it's these quality of life features designed specifically for gamers that I appreciate the most. Beyond what the phone can do hardware-wise, the ROG Phone 3 has gaming-specific software tricks up its sleeves. There's an app called Armory Crate where you can customize fan speed, RGB lighting, and game controls. You can even go in and customize how much power each core of your processor consumes. If you'd like to learn how to do that, you should definitely check out my friend David Kogan, The Unlocker's excellent video. In fact, I have him here with me today. Hi, David. You've used the phone for a week now. What is your favorite software-related gaming feature? Yeah, but I think it has to be the customization options in Game Genie while playing a game. You can set up the new air trigger options to add physical like controls to the touchscreen, adjust the refresh rate and performance settings, and notifications that can come through or not, all without leaving the game. I think gamers will just really appreciate that stuff. Yep, I think they will too. You should definitely check out David's video. You can click up here or down here. To access Game Genie, just swipe in from the left when you're inside a game. Coincidentally, when I was shooting this video, David sent me this message. And turning off notifications were a quick tap from here. You can also do other things like pull up a browser to quickly get hints about a game you're playing, or you can record gameplay with the new marked clip feature, which allows you to record short game clips to share on social media. And for those streamers out there, you can also connect to YouTube and stream directly from the game. And for those upgrading from last year's ROG phone, ASUS has removed Twitch streaming because Twitch hasn't fixed issues with their API. Now this next bit isn't necessarily a feature, but since we're talking about software, to make the phone really feel like a gaming phone, there's also custom ROG skins in black and white. From wallpapers to icons, it's very in keeping with the gamer's aesthetic. And if you purchase the optional lighting armor case, putting it on for the first time activates another exclusive theme. Of course, if you'd like a more stock Android experience, don't worry, ASUS gives you that option too. It's a clean, non-intrusive version of Android that most users will appreciate. Some new accessories launching alongside ROG Phone 3. Twin View Dock version 3 is similar to last year's model, except that its second screen also has a 144Hz refresh rate. The Kunai gamepad also gets an update. In version 3, the bumper is slimmer, buttons and triggers are overhauled, 
and now what was once the Kunai Holder has been split into two, the Kunai Charger and Grip. So now you can use them in three ways, the conventional handheld mode, all-in-one mode, and a new lower profile mobility mode. There's also a new accessory coming this year called the ROG Clip, which lets you connect your ROG phone to an already existing controller. There are three included clips that support the Xbox controller 3, a PS4 controller, or a Stadia controller. Just clip it on like so, dock your phone, and it connects via the bundled cable. If the ROG Phone 2 had two cameras, the ROG Phone 3 has, well, three. A 64 megapixel wide angle camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a new five megapixel macro camera. I think the question most of you might have is the same one Moshi asks. Gaming phones sometimes have a tendency not to have great cameras. Has it improved? I've got good news and bad news. The good news is compared to the ROG Phone 2, the camera has indeed improved. And that's both the wide angle and the ultra wide angle. But is it good enough to go head to head with the Samsung Galaxy S20 or the Huawei P40? The answer is nope. And that's the bad news. Don't get me wrong, during the day, it's fine. But in low light situations, it still struggles to compete as can be seen in this example. And that macro camera? doesn't seem to justify its existence. Take this comparison, for example. It didn't allow us to get as close as we needed to. Does it matter? Is it a deal breaker? Well, if you're still watching this video, it means that you are a hardcore gamer. And the reason I point that out is because the ROG Phone 3 is a niche phone for a niche audience. And maybe I'm wrong, but for this audience, I don't think it matters as much. But for everyone else looking for a kick-ass phone which can do everything, it's an Achilles heel, so to speak. Maybe next year, the team from ASUS can bump it up higher on their priority list. Before we wrap up, it's time for some rapid fire Q&A. Dual SIM? Yep, the global version is dual SIM. IP rating? Nope, the ROG Phone 3 is not officially water and dust resistant. How is the under display fingerprint scanner? It's pretty decent, no complaints here. No one terabyte model? Not right now. Currently, UFS 3.1 storage maxes out at 500 gigabytes. The team from ASUS tells us that once a one terabyte UFS 3.1 drive will become available, then they'll roll it out. And the all important question, price. The ROG Phone 3 starts at 999 euros for the 12 gigabyte 512 gigabyte model. If you want the fully maxed out model, that one will set you back by 1099 euros, which converts to about 1250 US. Not that bad actually. The Samsung Galaxy Ultra retails for just under 1400. In some areas, Asus is also selling the ROG Phone 3 Strix Edition, which only runs the non-plus Snapdragon 865. That phone will retail for 799 euros. Before we wrap up, let me talk about our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, a game that's all about building a team of strong warriors and leading them into battle versus AI or real life opponents. I was immediately drawn to the game because of its production value that commits to realism, showcasing graphics that make the most out of phones just like the ROG Phone 3. It's free to play and is available for iOS, Android, and PC, and you can download it now via the link below. Now, you know me, I'm extremely competitive, so most of my time has been spent leveling up my champions so that I can dominate the new Tag Team Arena, a challenging series of three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back 4x4 battles where special rewards await those who finish atop the rankings. Raid has 16 different factions. My favorite are the Dark Elves because they want to take over the world and I can relate to that. Join in and challenge me if you dare. New players who sign up using my link below will get 100,000 silver and a free epic champion. But act fast as these rewards will only be available for the next 30 days. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. So, is the ASUS ROG Phone 3 your gadget match? For those who want the utmost in mobile gaming, this phone delivers where it matters. Power, performance, battery life, and an ecosystem of accessories that set it apart from anything else in the market today. In terms of gaming phones, the ROG Phone 3 is still the gold standard. And for that, 
we give it the Gadget Match seal of approval. If you're not a hardcore gamer but still want a phone with top of the line specs, is this the phone to get? As long as you're okay with an average camera and low light photography isn't a priority, go for the ROG Phone 3. It's a spec monster. If you're an ASUS fan, you might also want to wait for the Zenfone 7 rumored to be coming real soon. Of course, we will have a video if and when that phone does arrive. So to make sure you don't miss that, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post that video and many more like it. Follow us on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make GadgetMatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.